uh, in the form, registration form, we put several topics that we would like you to say what is your order of priorities for future webinars. So we understand that besides uh, building your community resilience, we have also uh, uh, two other, uh, let's say, topics in priority. It's uh, all to use all the different uh, communication tools and uh, websites and social media tools, platforms. So we will try to get also experts, Israeli experts, and also European experts, so you will have the possibility to improve your toolbox or to use uh, social media websites. And also the, the other topic that uh, was in priority is the fundraising. So also we will uh, try to have experts uh, from Israel, also from Europe, we will help you uh, with uh, fundraising for your community and uh, to help you with your different projects. So we have on board uh, with us, together with us, uh, the head of the Regional Council of Sharon Negev and also Teila Revivo is the director of the Resilience Center of Sharon Negev and Maya Zilberbush who is the community social worker. So it's excellent that we have this webinar with them because uh, you will see it's the direct implementation of all what we learned from uh, Professor Mulilad in uh, the previous uh, webinar about resilience. So we now know we will see a perfect example how to implement it in the Shara Negev uh, communities, uh, Kibbutzim and Moshevim. And you will hear, we will first uh, hear uh, from the head of the regional Council of Sharon Negev, Ophir, hello, Ophir Lipstein. Yeah, hi. Okay, hi. One second, now we, you can see me. Hi, my name is Ophir Lipstein and I'm the mayor of Sharon Negev. And um, it's a great honor just, uh, you know, to meet and to talk about the resilience here in Sharon Negev. In uh, Sharon Negev, we are almost uh, 9,000 people that live on the border with Gaza, with the Gaza Strip. And when we said resilience, uh, this is what we are doing for 20 years. This is what, this is the life here in Shara Negev, to build the community resilience. Uh, usually it's the, because the security situation, but uh, now we take the, those uh, tools and we use it for the, uh, the new situation with the corona. Then I hope then um, when Tila and Maya will, uh, will tell you and they, they will speak and uh, they will uh, tell you exactly what we are doing to build the community, then I'm really happy if it can help any of you just um, to do and to learn. And uh, it's a great honor to be part of this uh, beautiful group. And thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Ophir, and uh, to uh, give us the opportunity to learn a little bit more about your experience and your way to build community resilience. So I understand that it's uh, now Teila or Maya who will take the floor now. Teila? Uh, Maya. Yes, yeah. Maya. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. First of all, um, I will say uh, that uh, also with us is Hannah Tal, uh, which is the head of the Social Services Department. And uh, the reason uh, we invited her to be with us, first of all, she's, um, she's a big part of what we do here in Shara Negev. Uh, she was the founder of the Resilience Center here in Shara Negev. Also, she speaks uh, English perfectly, <laughs> uh, and she will help us uh, to answer your questions. But Wait, first, you. we'll, okay, first uh, I will introduce myself. I'm a social worker, community social worker in the Resilience Center in Shara Negev, and I'm also the volunteering coordinator uh, for six years. Um, I'm mostly responsible of all the emergency preparedness area, but not just that. Uh, and I will show you a presentation uh, that will give us a baseline, but the most important thing will be after the presentation, your questions, because uh, this is uh, what we, we, we like to uh, answer what interest, interests you. 
uh, we have a lot to talk about. We can talk about resilience in Sharon Negev for uh, six hours, not for an hour. Uh, but uh, I'm very interested to see uh, what, uh, what you are dealing with and what can help you. Um, so we'll take just a few minutes for the presentation. Okay, everybody see my, yeah, okay. Um, so, um, Resilience Center in Charanagar. Okay. Uh, as Ophir said, we are almost 9,000 people in uh, Sharanagab. It's important to say that uh, I think three years ago, four years ago, we were just around uh, 6,500. So we are growing and this is a miracle because under these circumstances, you think uh, people would ask themselves if they want to live here. But something brings them back and something brings them uh, to seek for a house in this area, for a home in this area. And a big part of it is our resilience, our community resilience. Uh, we are uh, 10 kibbutzim. I have, to, uh, I have to explain what a kibbutz is. Or everybody knows. Everybody know? Okay, so 10 kibbutzim, one moshav, uh, and we have uh, one uh, newcomer's village from Ethiopia. Uh, we have a very unique educational campus in the middle of the regional council. Uh, it's unique because uh, it has a lot of services in it, including Safir College, uh, which is a big college here in the south. All of our schools, um, the social services department, we have a um, hydrotherapy center, we have our elderly center. It's uh, about 10,000 people cross this campus every day. It's more than the regional council itself. So it's a major, um, uh, a major center that uh, uh, we develop our strength from it. It's not just a place. Um, the, the regional council is it's, uh, not, it's not a large, it's, uh, actually very intimate. We can drive from north to south about 20 minutes stop. So it's very family uh, regional council. Um, and because it's mostly kibbutzim and it's very small, uh, it helps us to, to uh, develop uh, resilience uh, because we have a lot of connections between the kibbutzim with the moshav. Um, and we have a strong connection between the regional council and the kibbutzim and moshav because we visit there a lot every day. We, we are in the kibbutzim, we work in the kibbutzim and in moshav um, and it helps us that it's not very large. The distances are convenient for us. Um, you talked about, uh, Michelle, about our international experience. So uh, you're not the first uh, to approach us and uh, to uh, study together about this uh, subject. Um, um, the uh, causeway, it's not the regional council, I don't know how it's called in English, but not the city, but the uh, area. They approached us uh, to Alon, the uh, last um, head of the regional council before Ophir, and they wanted to learn together about emergency. We had uh, about uh, um, five or six um, delegations mutual delegations in Germany and in Israel. And we learned, and uh, the, the amazing thing is, um, although we have a lot of differences, uh, first of all, they are very large, it's 600,000 people and we are just 8,000. Uh, and they have just, uh, you know, fires and uh, maybe floods. And we have missiles. It's amazing that the core of the resilience is the same. And when you reach people, it's the same. And when you ask somebody, how are you? It's the same. It doesn't matter uh, um, what is the source of the trauma or what is the source of the problem. The uh, treatment and the connection between people are the same. So it's been, a, a, and, and we are still learning together 
uh, from each other. Um, we learned about the elderly um, for the last three years, the uh, treatment to the elderly. And the next subject I think is education. So we are, uh, we love international uh, mutual learning. And this is a, I, I am very excited at, uh, about this opportunity to talk with you today. Okay, so uh, major threats on our area, we talked about it, but you know, we have to uh, point it. And uh, for the last 20 years, this area uh, is uh, dealing with threats, with uh, very life threatening threats. And uh, in the last two years, it's important to say uh, we have escalation in this situation. And uh, we have a short term escalations, but very strong ones. Uh, and we have to deal with a routine uh, like the Corona. It's uh, like a routine that you feel uh, that uh, uh, you're dealing with a threat. Uh, and we had uh, a lot of uh, initiatives, new initiatives these two years to adjust ourselves. To, to this new situation. It's a new situation because we, we knew um, that every few years there is war, but between wars, relatively, uh, we live in quiet days. Now it's not like this. We're always waiting for something to happen. We don't know. Uh, we live in a very um, unknown world. And so it's it's a little bit uh, like the corona. You don't know when it's going to end. You don't know exactly when it, uh, what is the threat. Um, and it's very complex for us to live here in the last two years. And I will in a second talk about what it did to the resilience. So I, I wrote resilience despite and even thanks to. Uh, I know it sounds a little bit... Um, uh, unbelievable, okay? But uh, in these situations, uh, sometimes we say if we didn't have the missiles, uh, I don't know what would have happened. Maybe a different resilience, but it's a very unique resi community resilience when there, the threat is always there. Uh, and you can see in the pictures, um, it's very, uh, we, can, we can one day protect our, our children under uh, attack and uh, after two days, a week, uh, a month, dance in the streets, do communi community projects together and to uh, continue building our community resilience. And it's despite and it, sometimes we say it's thanks to because it brings it's bring people together we want to do it together uh, we share the same experience we sh we are in the same family that share the same trauma and together as a family we can also get out of it um, and we use it when we work with communities and uh, we look at what happened uh, in, the, in the crisis and we take the, the good things from it and see how we can uh, adopt, how we can adopt them also to the routine days. And I think in the corona, we have to learn it also. What we did and what we are doing that we can now um, take to the future after the corona. Uh, I will say a few words on the Resilience Center. Uh, it was established, uh, as I say, uh, in the social services in Sharon Negev, but uh, Hannah Tal was one of the founders. She was the first head of the Resilience Center. She's here. Uh, and um, we believe that our mission is to remind our residents, families, and communities of the things that help them and give each of them the opportunity to get their resources stronger and available. Each one of our residents and families has their resources. We just have to explore with them. What are the resources that help you when you are in crisis and how you can get them strong? And also what, what 
else you can adopt from these, the other resources that you can say, oh, okay, it also fits me, not just what I know, maybe another resource that I can uh, do with my family or with my community. And you talk to Mulilad, and he showed you probably this uh, model uh, that each one has its, um, um, uh, each person has its uh, more, um, uh, he focuses on one or two resources but we can widen the resources we use. And I'm saying it because you have to be very, um, to listen to your communities and to your people and try to recognize what your community, uh, what is your major resource. If your community uh, is very good at doing things and that what helps you go through crisis, so use it and do things together. If your community focuses on, uh, um, on uh, maybe innovations or doing uh, uh, or building ideas together, so probably you have to work with it now. Uh, maybe your mind is very strong resource in your community. And of course, imagination, creativity, culture, Okay, so you have to be, to listen to your community. Uh, and I believe that if you uh, identify one or two resources that, you, that helped you before in crises, and you, uh, you think they were, uh, of course, successful, use it again. Try to use it again and embrace it in your community. And, a resilience center is not just doing community resilience. Uh, first of all, we're doing therapy. Each resident in Sharon Negev that feels that uh, their life was impacted by the emergency, emergency times, uh, can get treatment uh, without any cost in the resilience center. We believe also in family treatment. We think family treatment is, uh, is uh, more um, it gives the whole family a place uh, to talk about the situation and not just about one person because each one of the family actually deals with the emergency times and not just one. Uh, we are doing a lot of uh, workshops to build people uh, coping resources. Uh, we're doing it for parents, we're doing it for youth, for elderly, for young parents, for mature parents, for youngsters, um, students. Uh, we believe that uh, as long as you uh, um, uh, invest in your inner resources to deal with, it, with crisis, uh, when the crisis comes, you will be stronger and you will be able to get back to your routine and to yourself faster. This is resilience actually. And uh, we're doing emergency readiness. We, had, we have emergency teams, I will talk about it later, we have emergency teams in each uh, kibbutz, of course the Moshav, um, which we train, uh, we learn with them, we cope with them, and of course when crises come, we are working with them every day, each minute. They are our address, they manage, they actually become the manager of the kibbutz with community manager together, and we work with them. And it's a very important leadership in crisis. That's why we invest in them and we think them. Um, a few words about community resilience. We believe that you have to build a sense of belonging to the community, a sense of unity and mutual support and solidarity. It can be formal and it can be informal. It's important in the community that we have solidarity services, formal services, but also informal services. It's not, it's, it's as important as, as, for, as the formal services. Volunteers, of course. And being uh, in charge and control, people have to, uh, they need to feel leadership to build the community resilience. They need to feel that somebody is handling things and listen to them. Um, 
we have to build trust, okay, in the in uh, the personal capacities to cope. We have to believe that our residents can cope with the situation and tell them that, and even acknowledge and say we see your effort, and you know it's a it's a big effort you're doing. And of course, we believe that each community has its uniqueness and has to uh, uh, build. Uh, its own community resilience that is very uh, unique to her needs, uh, to her resources, the leadership, um, and all of that together will bring us to a better community resilience. Um, a few words about that. We believe that you have to do an ongoing effort. It can be just in crisis. We saw in the corona that there are places like neighborhoods that build the community resilience during these times. But we believe that if it was better, if they would do it in routine times and prepare themselves. Uh, it's not spontaneous, but I, we believe that people will feel more secure uh, if you work it, if you work on it. And, and the more we, you have to talk about it with your community. If you're doing something to prepare yourself for the next time, write about it, talk about it. It gives people the confidence they need. Of course, we have to uh, uh, build leaders that are professional, that know their community, that are familiar with the communities, that they have to be present in the crisis time. They don't, you know, we had, Wars in Israel, the, the cities, the mayors just went home and the army went in and it, it's, it's very destructive to the community resilience. We have to see our leaders in crisis. And they know to emphasize the local strength. They know the community, not just their uh, weaknesses and conflicts, but their strength. Um, and as, the, as it says here, there is no substitute for local strength in the community. You can bring experts, you can bring volunteers from everywhere. There is no substitute for the residents that are doing for themselves. Okay, and now for the, uh, for, for how it looks. So I will talk about the Corona times, uh, but we can talk also about the emergency times. Um, First of all, because we are working on leadership and emergency teams, uh, as soon as we understood that Corona is here in Israel, uh, um, we had Corona teams um, established in the in our kibbutzim and moshav. We decided that the community leaders, the community manager in routine times, will be now the community leader and not the emergency team head because in emergency times, the emergency team head, the head of the emergency team becomes the manager at most of our kibbutzim. But in Corona times, we thought, uh, because we didn't know how long it would take, and it was not an acute event. It was uh, something that was, the continuum was different. We believe that the routine leaders should be the ones that manage now the situation and not another team. The emergency team head was part of the corona team. He was a major part of the corona team, but he was not the manager. They did mapping. It's very important. They took the, uh, the names of the community, the names in the community. They saw who is now more vulnerable. Uh, the elderly are not the ones that are vulnerable in emergency times. Families are more vulnerable here, but in the corona, they became the most, the, the population we had to deal with, uh, and we mapped it with the emergency team. The emergency teams mapped the, their population. Then they started the decision-making. They saw what the needs are. They saw the numbers, and they said, okay, we have to build uh, these team and this team, and we have to have at least 20 volunteers for the elderly, okay? So uh, they started to do decision-making and started to spread information 
to the community. They build an information method. They told the community the information uh, would go through, okay? The kibbutz Facebook, the kibbutz WhatsApp, whatever they chose. But the population knew what is the uh, platform, what is the information platform they would get the information from. It's very important in its security when you know where to seek information. Uh, volunteers, one of our resources in crisis time. So volunteers did uh, uh, food spread, you know, they took food to elderly, uh, they, they dealt with loneliness, uh, of course on the phone at first, but then we could also uh, knock on the door and stay away and ask, how are you? Uh, a lot, a lot of culture and spirit and singing in the streets, um, and uh, deliver uh, surprises to, uh, to families and, uh, and elderly, cakes, challahs on Shabbat, uh, a lot of spirit and culture uh, with volunteers. Um, community consumption. Uh, we, we started uh, uh, buying directly from uh, the farmers and, um, you know, uh, we, I saw people that are not involved in our community. Uh, I'm from one of the kibbutzim, Bro uh, and and uh, they, they became volunteers because now they can uh, order some uh, tomatoes or order some strawberries um, or order some meat uh, to the community. And uh, this uh, gathering, it was, it, it was not gathering because you can't. But when the farmer came and we had to pick up our order and everybody was like talking about it, uh, it it's funny, but it, it, is, it, it was part of the community resilience. We all bought together, we all helped the farmers. And it was a very big part of the Corona times. And we try to keep, uh, keep it now also. And, uh, and we established models for community resilience. So we have neighborhood leaders. Uh, some of the kibbutzim had it before, but some doesn't. And they just, um, they recruit volunteers to be neighborhood leaders. So you have a local address. It's not just the emergency team that you see, you see the emergency team uh, as the leadership, but you have a neighbor that is your address. And he asks you, how are you? And if you need something, I'm here for you. And each neighborhood leader was responsible no more than 20 families. So it was very intimate. We did a lot of workshops and meetings, a lot of it, of course, on Zoom with parents, seniors, businesses, how you deal with businesses owner, how you deal with these uh, times. Also, not just business-wise, but uh, emotional, how you deal with the managing your business now. And we did a lot of community zones. People from the community told about their expertise each evening. Uh, we knew our friends from a different angle. I didn't know what my neighbor does uh, in her job, in her day job, and now she's telling me about it. So these are, these are models that we uh, established uh, through these corona times and of course we uh, we also we 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 um, implement these uh, models also in emergency times when we have uh, missiles but in corona times we adapt them to this new situation and this is also community resilience to know how to adapt um, and I think it's time for questions and if you want to say something, we'll be happy to answer. Okay, thank you, Maya. Uh, so until people will digest all what you said, uh, please uh, type your uh, questions in, in the chat and we, uh, I will reflect it and uh, Maya will respond or Tal will respond, I think. Okay, so now I have a question uh, by, by myself because you said uh, a very interesting point and uh, uh, the main thing that I would like to understand from you 
it's you said uh, so rightly that people need to feel leadership and uh, but on the other hand understand that you have uh, the emerging uh, when you have a crisis uh, you have those uh, team leader who become the managers so what is the place of your of those professional managers or crisis managers and your uh, let's say leadership they're putting them aside they're combining their efforts or, or you are doing that Okay, so uh, it's, it's a good question. <laughs> um, I think uh, in... Uh, I think in the last years we are uh, this 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 uh, issue is, uh, uh, is we focused on it. Who needs to be who needs to be the leader? Um, uh, the, the emergency team head is a volunteer, uh, but the community manager is a professional, you know, and that gets salary. So what is what is the best model? Mm -hmm. So a few years ago, we wrote a model uh, on what we think is the best arrangement in this leadership. And we think the best arrangement is to, uh, is to work together. And the most important thing that in routine times, you have to decide what is the, responsib what is, what is the responsibilities and the authorities of each um, of each group. The routine leadership can take all the routine things that, that it knows how to manage, but to, uh, to respond to an acute uh, event, the emergency team is more trained to it. They can uh, make very fast decisions uh, opposed to a, a regular management that sometimes have to think about it and it takes a few days okay and it's okay the emergency team is trained to make very fast decisions and to respond fast and i think the key is to sit down in routine times and to talk about it and to see what's best for your community some of our team decided that the community manager is always the head and the emergency team is under it is under him, under him or her. Um, some of the kibbutzim, the opposite way. The emergency team head now is the leader. And, the com in, and they decided it because it's, they think it's the best for their community. The community yeah. manager is part of the emergency team. He works as a partner with the emergency head. But still, the emergency team head is now the leader. Most of the kibbutzim combine the model. They have resp they, the community manager has its responsibilities. The emergency team head has its uh, responsibilities, and they work together in a mutual team. I don't know if it answered your question. In the Corona times, we decided as a regional council with the community leaders that we think the community manager managers need to be the head and it was of course okay with the emergency teams the head and they work together as a partnership yes because my my question was also a practical one for those uh, our jewish communities not all of them can afford to have you know community manager or the director of the community and also to have emergency uh, team leader or manager it's uh, quite complicated and also many of those decisions have a financial impact or, you know, it's a question of budget, it's a question also of responsibilities. So maybe the model that could be adapted in Europe, it's maybe to have this emergency advisor, you know, someone who can be together with the community director and to advise him or to take decisions and what is important to take as a decision together with right. the president of the of the community so right. it's good to 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 reflect with you and to think about with you 
how to make the best uh, out of that because it's for many of our uh, Jewish leaders, it's new tools. Uh, and, and therefore we have to see how to implement it in practical way. I think okay. the most yeah. important, I think the most important uh, thing is not just the who, but the how. To build a structure that you know you can take out of the drawer in crisis times and say, okay, in routine times we take uh, decisions this way, but in crisis times we take decisions another way. And we write it in routine times, but we, uh, um, as crisis comes, we change. We, we can't work in the same pace. We need to change our decision making processes. So it's also, no, uh, is Taylor, yes. Um, it also depends where he lives, the manager. If he lives in the kibbutz, so he can take the, the management. And if not, he needs the, the resilience uh, team. Yeah. Yes, because uh, in, in Israel, sometimes, as you say, the, the director of the kibbutz, of the moshav, is not always living in the same community. Sometimes mm -hmm. he's an outsider. All right, so uh, now we have a few questions about also the, the, what you say, the workshops that you are doing how to develop the coping resources of your uh, communities. So we have a question here that uh, you mentioned that each family has its, its own tools that you focus on while helping in times of crisis. And the question is, can you give one example for those tools? What are those tools that you are in developing or focusing on our workshop? And maybe something we all have and did not think about. Okay, so first of all, um, we have uh, parents groups uh, and we try to do it amid after, immediate after a crisis because uh, people after a crisis, uh, uh, we uh, we hear from them that they need it. They need it to to talk uh, to talk together about what happened, and uh, not just what happened, uh, what helped them and what can help them next in the next crisis. Uh, parents with small kids uh, were not uh, very uh, experienced. Um, we have a, a thing. We have a running group which works year, uh, year long. Uh, we have, uh, uh, we train them with a social worker and a running trainer together to work on uh, how sports can um, get you stronger to cope with crisis. We have, we had um, styling uh, workshops for moms and teens. We had storytelling uh, uh, as a workshop to people, um, more workshops, Anna? I would say that the basic model is the model of uh, Professor Muli Lahat, the basic PH. And uh, we have, if, 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 you are talking, uh, if you are talking about uh, the uh, storytelling, or you are talking about running, about sport, or you are talking about uh, the examples that Maya Gave. So regionally, we make um, we make groups with one uh, modality of uh, of coping, like sport, like uh, storytelling, like styling, like, like humor, or things like this. But to the families, to the, or the parent group, we teach them uh, to to uh, to to see and explore what are the strengths in the family, what is working in their family, what is working with the children, what is working to the parents, and together they build um, a plan for emergency times. That's what, this is basically what we are doing in parents group for, for all the ages, for young, for young children, for children in elementary school, for, for parents, for the, uh, 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 young adults, and so on. Also now we're working with elderly. Yeah. Okay. But the basic, the basic model of our uh, groups is always this uh, model of resources of uh, basic pH, we can, you can say. Okay, now we have a question from uh, Paloma Vivaldi. 
So I will unmute you so you can ask your question about. Uh, wait a second. Okay. No. No, I cannot. Uh, uh, Daphna or Michals, can you help me with unmuting Paloma? Here. Okay. Yes, Do you fine. hear me? Yes. Yes. Please, Paloma. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I was just wondering which tools do you use to promote to promote coping resources in young people specifically? Okay, thank you. Thank you. טוב, אני אומרת בעברית כדי שהאוזניים שלכם לא יחרקו. אז באמת אחת הדברים שאנחנו מאוד מאוד מאמינים בהם זה דווקא שהחוסן של ילדים, הדבר שהכי משפיע עליו זה ההורים שלהם והקשר שיש להם עם ההורים. We believe that the most important thing for children is uh, that uh, uh, it, it, the most in, uh, influenced thing about children is their parents and the connection they build with their children. And that's what influenced their resilience. ולכן רוב הסדנאות שלנו, אפשר להגיד ש-80% מהסדנאות שלנו יהיו תמיד הורים וילדים ביחד. ובסדנה הזאת אנחנו ניתן דגשים בכמה היבטים, שאחד מהם זה יהיה קודם כל זמן טוב משותף להורה ולילד. 80% of our uh, workshops uh, will be parents and children together. Uh, in these workshops, first of all, we want them to enjoy together, to feel good with each other. אנחנו נעשה הרבה מהחלקים שהם משותפים, ששם ממש יש הדגמה. איך, איך עושים תקשורת טובה עם ילד, איזה דברים פשוטים אפשר לעשות כדי שהילד יוכל להרגיש טוב יותר וגם ההורה ירגיש טוב יותר. אוקיי, אנחנו עושים actually, in this meeting we, we meet our kid and uh, we, uh, we see how we, we can do, uh, how we can work on a better communication, how we can play with our kid, how we can feel better together with our kid. וגם ניתן זמן מחולק בתוך אותה סדנה, שיהיה להורים איזושהי הזדמנות להתבונן, לעשות איזושהי רפלקציה על מה שהיה עבורם, וגם לילדים איזשהו זמן תעסוקה. And, uh, and we'll give time for the parents alone and the kids alone, uh, so we can talk to the parents and reflect them what we did and what tools we can take גם בסדנאות האלה אנחנו נשתמש ב-Basic PH ונעשה את כל התחומים, מדמיון, יצירה, קשר, כל מה שיחסים, מה שאפשר כדי לתת לכל דיאדה של הורה וילד את האפשרות למצוא את הדבר שמחזק אותם ביותר. הדבר האחרון שאני אגיד זה שהסדנאות האלה מאוד מבוקשות, ודוגמה שככה הייתה לי מסיכום של סדנה זה שאימא אמרה לי... These workshops are uh, very popular. And Tehila uh, will give an example uh, on one of the responses from a mother. שאמרה לי בסוף הסדנה, מאז שנכנסתי לסדנה הזאת, הילד כבר לא מבקש ממני כל יום מתנה, שאני חוזרת מהעבודה. And she said, uh, uh, from the time we did the workshop, uh, my kid uh, uh, is not uh, ask, asking me for, what did I bring him when I come home? And we do things together. תתייחסי. כן. 
את יכולה להתייחס לסטורי טיילינג שעשינו איתם עם הנוער ולסטיילינג. גם ההתנדבות של הנוער. כן. We did some storytelling uh, workshops, uh, a, a short-term storytelling workshops with the youth. We did uh, spoken word uh, workshops uh, to write about your feelings and to uh, 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 go on the stage and uh, read it. Um, we, we try to uh, recruit uh, youth uh, to some of the emergency tasks Uh, we have emergency rooms that they can uh, answer phone calls there. Uh, they know technology better than any of us, so th they work with us in these areas. Uh, but it's complex. It's complex to recruit youth and to, it's complex to reach them. Uh, and we try different things that we think would be uh, popular among them. And I think the storytelling and the spoken word was uh, was a hit. A styling gun. And the styling, right, with the teenagers uh, and mom and teenagers. חנאטרוצאלאגים <laughs> Usually when they come to the kibbutz in their first year, they are joining uh, all the volunteering teams that are in the community. If there is the emergency team, if there are um, uh, teams for, for the holidays, uh, for, the, uh, for the culture, uh, events of culture, and uh, in order to get, uh, to be members in the community, they have to prove themselves. So, They are making a lot of, uh, of community job, a, lo a lot of community work and a lot of volunteering. And by, by this, they are not only approved themselves, but they also get inside the community and they feel like they are one, one of them. Um, we need, uh, when there are emergency times, um, emergency events, Uh, usually they are one, uh, one of our vulnerable uh, population because they don't know how to uh, react in these uh, situations. So usually the emergency team is paying an atten attention to this family of newcomers and they are helping them more than to the uh, more um, people who are more years in the, in the kibbutz of home. And also we have a... Uh, Uh, Klita team, um, how do you say? Uh, Integration? Or... Yes, uh, that, will, that will give the, the family information about the community, will be like an, a, maybe a, a adopt the family, you know, family to family, that they will mm -hmm. uh, feel a part of the family. Um, uh, for the first year, they, I, I think uh, the communities will try to bring them closely maybe uh, send them uh, invitations to events more frequently. Um, um, some of the kibbutzim has a, a, a volunteering team for that, uh, a welcome team, uh, a flyer that has all the information on the community uh, to give them. And some of the kibbutzim had a very long uh, community process around the The changes, one of our kibbutzim uh, uh, brought uh, inside uh, the kibbutz uh, around 30 families in two years. So they had a, a very long community process and uh, how we bring those populations together, how we talk about a mutual future, what are, uh, what are values, what are mutual values that we want to focus on together. Uh, and the Resilience Center, together with the Social Services Department, we, um, 
we mentored these uh, social processes. Okay, thank you. Now also a question related to the elderly people who have no access to Zoom, or are you reaching them out? Um, first of all, uh, we try to see who can be uh, connected to Zoom. Uh, and um, most of the most of our kibbutzim and also in the moshav, they went from elderly to elderly and connected them with volunteers. The ones that doesn't have and doesn't have the skills or even a smartphone, and the volunteers just kept in touch. So uh, what uh, to see they are not alone, to see all their needs uh, are taken care of. Um, but uh, many of them connected to Zoom and use it. Excellent. <laughs> the help, so, of course, <laughs> with the help of volunteers, of course. Uh, I don't know, Daniel, are you uh, here? Daniel Citon? Hello, Daniel? No, Daniel de saint -Don. אני רק אגיד עוד על מה שמאיה אמרה. Wait a second. Wait a second, Taylor wants to add something. Please, please, Taylor. לא, שיש גם את האפשרות להשתלט על המחשב מרחוק, וגם את זה ראינו שבני משפחה עושים עבור המבוגרים ועוזרים להם להתקין את הזום ולהתחבר ככה. What Taylor said, that family members can take over the Zoom and the elderly computer. And, that, and uh, implement all the things that needs to be on the computer that they can uh, join Zoom. Okay, all right. Uh, Daniel Ben Sadon, you want to ask your question? Can you also help me? I have a problem to unmute him. Uh, Daphna Michals, Daniel Ben Sadon, can you help me unmute him? I don't know what's going on. Um, Daniel? Yes. Okay. Yes. Please yes. Uh, ask your, your question uh, because it's very specific questions and I don't want to miss it. Uh, okay. Okay. Because uh, I'm in the bibliography and I used the, the cram is a questioner is, um, you see, is the a service from Ben, ben, ben Gurion. Ben Gurion University for uh -huh. to measure the to measure the resilience of community. So I want I would like to know if you know the the tools the tool if you use this tool. Okay, so it's about need assessment. What you are asking? Yeah. It's a yes. professional tool for Profession need assessment. Okay, please. Yes, yeah. yes. you do you know this? Of a we know it. We know it, and now we are going to use it as a, in our communities. Teila, can you tell me a few words about this? About the survey that we do in Okay, as a, it's very important to us to know what, uh, how our uh, community, how, how their resilience, and um, now in the corona, it's important to, to us, um, and I'm going to continue in English, so I'll say that זה חשוב לנו תמיד לדעת מה שלומם, כי החוסן שלנו כל הזמן מאותגר סביב המצב הביטחוני. אבל it's עכשיו... Important, it's important to, to us to always know uh, how our, uh, our communities, uh, because it's, uh, it's a very uh, uh, it's challenging to see how we, uh, how we keep this resilience uh, through our events. ועכשיו בקורונה היה לנו חשוב עוד יותר לדעת מה שלומם, כי היה לנו חשוב לדעת האם הקורונה זה משהו שדווקא אולי להם יותר קל להתמודד, כי הם למדו איך להתמודד עם מצבי חירום, או שיותר קשה להם כי הם כבר עייפים ומותשים. Are they getting to the corona stronger because they know how to deal with crisis times or are they uh, coming weaker because they have to deal with so much that now their resources are less strong? And also, we wanted to know what the 
שהם למדו בעבר עזר להם להתמודד עם הקורונה, כדי שנדע גם אה, לחזק אותו, אותם יותר. אה, כי אנחנו צריכים באמת להיות מוכנים גם סביב המציאות הביטחונית, אבל גם סביב זה שהנה הקורונה באה ולימדה שיש אתגרים נוספים, אה, מורכבים לא פחות לפעמים. So we really intrigued by the question of what helped them uh, before that they used it now in the Corona times, because uh, first of all, uh, we believe that the uh, emergency event is waiting to happen. Uh, we, we, we hope uh, for peace days, but we know it's going to happen, maybe going to happen. And also the Corona surprised us, so we don't know what crisis אז גמרנו עכשיו למפות עם השותפים שלנו, כמו יורי הצחי, כמו מנהלי הקהילות, כמו הנהלת המועצה, מה חשוב להם לדעת על החוסן הקהילתי. אחת הדוגמאות שאני יכולה לתת... רגע, אז אנחנו נפגשנו עם המנהלים והמנהלים 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 והמנהלים. ואחת השאלות שחזרה על עצמה, זה בעצם מה מודל ההנהגה, זה אפרופו מה שמאיה דיברה קודם, מה מודל ההנהגה שהם הרגישו אותו טוב, איתו טוב יותר? היה להם הזדמנות להתנסות עם יורי הצחי, ועכשיו הייתה להם הזדמנות להתנסות עם מנהלי הקהילה. האם זה שינה משהו לתושבים? Uh, they knew the model before when uh, the emergency team is the head. Now they, now, now they see uh, that the community manager is the head and there is a combined team. What is best for them? Maybe we can do a, a new model in the future. Hey, thank you. We have a, a few other questions. Uh, specifically, uh, regarding uh, the emergency readiness. Uh, what are you doing, uh, or when are you preparing uh, the community for the next crisis? What, uh, if I may also ask Matt, what are your five tips for uh, a community a leader? What he has to do in crisis time and what he has to do in routine in order to, be, to build his, the community resilience? You know, three or five tips, uh, it was response to a few questions that I got maybe. So I want to respond to this question. What are you, your recommendations and your <laughs> tips for a community leader in routine time and in crisis time? What he has to pay attention to? Okay, Hannah, <laughs> let's start. First, he has to prepare himself in times of uh, routine to the times of emergency. Don't think that, you, uh, that in emergency you will suddenly know how to react. As better as you prepare yourself, you, it's better when, when, it, it, when emergency times come. This is the first thing. The other thing is to, uh, to listen to your people, not, not, uh, not all the time uh, community leaders are listening to the people and sometimes they miss uh, their needs, uh, what they are thinking, what they are wishing for, and so on. So it's a very good tip is to listen to your people. Um, the third a tip that I would say is working uh, with a team, not alone, but always with a team of people from the, from the community. And the, uh, the more people you're working with, the more resilient the community is, because people who have a role, uh, has something to do in emergency times, they feel better with themselves and they are more resilient. So give uh, roles to all the people, the, the most people that you can, you can give in your community. And this is what I'm thinking, and there are more, but my colleagues will say. אני אוסיף עוד משהו אחד, שאחרי אירוע משברי שקורה, זה שווה וחשוב לאסוף את כל הקהילה בכל מיני אופנים, יש דרכים יצירתיות ושונות לעשות את זה, אבל בעצם לאפשר לקהילה לספר את הסיפור שלה. ולייצר סיפור משותף. והרבה פעמים כשהם מייצרים סיפור משותף, אז הדברים נראים גם טובים יותר וגם שלמים יותר, וגם עוזר להם לראות את הכוחות ומה עזר להם להתמודד, כדי שהם יוכלו באמת להתכונן לפעם הבאה. הרבה פעמים בתוך שאלה... 
Uh, immediately after a crisis event, uh, it's important to bring all the community together to talk about what happened and to, uh, to um, uh, establish a mutual story because each one has its, its own story and together we can establish a mutual story and we can see all the parts of the community and we can talk about what worked for us uh, in this crisis that we can take um, for a long term to our community. And I want to add something uh, that you never know who is vulnerable. vulnerable. And uh, we know uh, that we always, we think we know that this family will, uh, um, will uh, uh, reply in this uh, situation like this. And the elderly will be like this. But it's not true. We never know. And we see very strong people in different crises act differently. And sometimes they break. So I want to um, widen what Hannah said about listening. Uh, listen to all and not just to the people you think are more vulnerable. Or don't assume anything that uh, you already know. Um, different crises meet different people uh, in a different way. And also their strength is different in each part, in each uh, life situation. So uh, listen carefully to everybody and each population in your community, not just to the ones you think it's most important to. It's important to listen to everyone, but also to talk to the community. אנשים שהתמודדו טוב בפעם הקודמת יכולים הפעם למצוא את עצמם במצב מורכב יותר, ולכן גם כשמדברים אל האנשים צריך לקחת בחשבון שכל האופציות ברגע הזה פתוחות, ולכן מדברים שהכול פתוח ויש לגיטימציה לכל סוגי ההתמודדות. And also give, um, it's very legitimate to feel when you, when you were strong the, the last time, but now you are weaker. And it's okay. It's very natural that your strength uh, is uh, less now. So when you talk to your community, remember that, that you have to talk to everybody and to give them uh, the opportunity to be vulnerable this time. So you have to to give information to the people all the time, to be uh, transparent, I think is the word, uh, to, tell, to tell the truth, not to hide anything, and, um, and uh, tell the people what to do, because sometimes people need guidance. But be very uh, delicate with it, not to be the dictator, but the one who is, who is, give, who is giving the guidelines, I would say. And every time we ask ourselves, are we, uh, are we sending too much information? The answer most of the times is no. No. Right. <laughs> it doesn't, okay. it doesn't, right. uh, it, it doesn't uh, ri uh, rise anxiety. Okay. It's most of the people like information and it comes there. אפילו ש... אפילו שהתקשורת אומרת את הדברים האלה, הם עדיין מצפים לקבל את ה... אינפורמציה הזאתי, מהיישוב, מההנהלה של היישוב, מהמועצה, כי זה נשמע אחרת, זה בשפה המותאמת ליישוב, וזה עם הרבה יותר אמון. Even if the news uh, gives them all the information they need, it's important that the community leaders will give the information themselves. Uh, first of all, they write them in, in the, their community words, uh, and with their community narrative, and the people will feel there is there is the leadership that gives us what we need. And the news is the news. Okay, I gather, uh, thank you. I gather another two uh, questions. Uh, uh, the first one is, ab is about uh, developing your coping resources. Uh, we said in Hebrew, there is no Navi Beiro. Are you relying on uh, 
let's say external professionals. So we are trying to identify amongst your community those who can, you know, share their own coping resource skills. Or, or are you doing that? Or you are doing that? Anna? If first, when, did, when we didn't know anything, we brought experts from, the, from outside. But we, we brought the experts that knew how to teach us and to go and leave us to make uh, our, to be uh, auto autonomic, uh, to be for ourselves. Uh, for example, Professor Mulilad is one of them. He knows how to teach you and to go and to say, now you are the, the expert for your community and you know better. Uh, so if you don't know anything, of course you can use experts, but um, most of the time you have people in your community that, that know the community and know how to, uh, how to make things. So for us, it was very important in a short time to become the experts for ourselves in almost every... One of the things we did זה שאנחנו מלמדים כל הזמן ביישובים את האנשים איך uh, לעשות עזרה ראשונה נפשית, כדי שהם יוכלו uh, לתת את התשובות. זה גם נותן לנו מענה שאם אנשי המקצוע לא יוכלו להגיע, כי הכבישים יהיו חסומים בגלל טילים, אבל זה בעיקר נותן את היכולת שלהם לתת מענה בתוך היישוב שלהם ולהעלות את החוסן. people in the kibbutzim residents uh, to do a first aid uh, treatment for anxiety. Um, um, anxiety casualties. And anxiety casualties to be the first responders, not just uh, because uh, we not always can get to the kibbutz in time because of the missiles, but also we believe it brings the resilience uh, it, 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 uh, it's wrong in the resilience because people from the uh, kibbutz or moshav uh, treat uh, another, uh, they treat their friends, their families, and also it's good for themselves. So uh, it's a win-win situation. Uh, the, mo the, uh, the more we train people, we see uh, how the, uh, also the emergency teams and all of the community um, feel uh, safer. In this matter. All right. Uh, an additional question that I got is about the emergency team. What are the specific uh, or vital roles or positions that you need in such a team? So, what do you need there? What are the different kind of people that you must have on emergency uh, team from your own experience? So, in the team, there is a head and a deputy sometimes. Um, there is a security guy that is all uh, is working on routine times, but when crisis comes, he uh, is combined in the emergency team. Uh, we have a welfare team, which is responsible on all the treat the population uh, to map the population to see what the needs are, to get volunteers to the houses, everything. Of course, uh, anxiety is casualties if we need to. Uh, treat somebody. We have a welfare team. We had a logistic team. Uh, all the um, electricity, water, closing the gate when a missile hits, we close the area. All the logistic <laughs> food, bringing food into the um, into the kibbutz. Uh, we have a, med a medical team. Uh, most of it is the nurse, but not all the kibbutz team has a regular nurse in crisis time. So uh, we have a spokesman uh, in the emergency team, spokesman outside the community to the, to the news, to the, okay, to the net. And we have uh, uh, some of the emergency teams have um, somebody that is responsible on the uh, inside information, all the messages that go into the, that goes into the community. We have an educational team for the kids. Um, yeah, this is the main. Okay, so I see that uh, you are touching different aspects of all what you have to do in the Each department. aspect of the, But yeah. everyone, everyone has a specific role and should take care yes. of its own field of expertise. Yes, and they sit together each day, uh, at least uh, one meeting together. All right. 
ואפשר להוסיף שעברנו yes. שינוי. כי בהתחלה מי שנכנסו לצוותים היו גברים ביטחוניסטים, שבעצם חשבו שהולכים כמו הצבא לנהל פה את האירוע. לקח זמן להבין שבעצם זה אירוע אזרחי, ושמה שהאזרחים צריכים זה, זה ניהול והנהגה והכלה. ולכן אנחנו רואים היום, וזה מדהים השינוי הזה, שיש הרבה אה, מאוד נשים בתוך צוותי הצח"י, ומחצית מהורי הצח"י שלנו הפכו להיות נשים כשההבנה הזאת הגיעה. And uh, people uh, and the men uh, were recruited to these uh, teams. They thought they are going to uh, to the army, but they're not. And uh, when um, through the years, we saw that the main thing in these teams is leadership and take care of your community and listen to your communities and to treat your community. And now we have fifty uh, percent of our uh, emergency team leaders are women. So. We can see that we have here 100% because we have Taylor, Maya, and Hannah. So we are 100%. It's fine. Super. Yeah, we did it. We did it. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, Tal, please, uh, your question. Yeah, uh, we know that, uh, first of all, it's so inspiring, inspiring uh, to, to hear you and to see you. And now I understand why we are talking about the strong gender of women. Mm -hmm. It's, it's wonderful to see you all uh, three. Um, hopefully uh, this corona crisis is uh, going to an end. And I would like to ask you, what wouldn't you waste from this crisis? Uh, why should we take wherever we are in, in uh, Europe? What should we take with us and uh, make this crisis an opportunity? אני אגיד שהדבר הראשון שלמדנו על התקופה הזאת זה שיש כל כך הרבה כוחות בקהילה שהיו חבויים. ו... The first thing we learned is that we have a lot of resources in our communities that were hidden. שפתאום שאנשים, גם התפנה להם זמן, גם אם לא ידעו לקראת איזה תקופה זה הולך, יצאו עם הרבה יוזמות, ויכולנו לראות, מאיה תיארה את זה במצגת שלה, אבל יכולנו לראות... תרבות ענפה שבאמת אומרת איך, כל, איך אנחנו דואגים שכל אחד שנמצא לבד מרגיש ביחד בתוך זה. ואני חושבת שבש... שנייה, שנייה, And they wanted to, to, uh, to bring the feeling to everybody that they are not alone. אז אני חושבת שמה שאנחנו הכי צריכים ללמוד זה איך אנחנו משמרים, איך לא לפספס את אותם אנשים uh, שכבר הצלחנו לראות אותם והצלחנו לראות את היכולות שלהם, איך אנחנו משמרים אותם גם לתקופות uh, אחרות. So we have to learn how uh, we are uh, keeping Uh, the, the new volunteers that uh, rose through Corona times, how we can keep them uh, being a big part of the resilience uh, circles in, the, in their communities for long term, and not uh, to uh, miss this opportunity. הדבר השני, זה תמיד דיברנו על שיתופי פעולה וגם מאוד השתדלנו לעשות אותם, אבל בקורונה זה היה מאוד מאוד חזק, אי אפשר היה לעבוד בלי שיתופי פעולה. בין המועצה ליישובים. רגע, וגם את זה, לשמר, לראות and, איך... And also this, to keep, to keep working on our partnership. אוקיי, תודה רבה. מאיה, חנה, אתה רוצה, תהילה, להגיד כמה מילים של קונקרוזיון? אתם רוצים? כן, 
You can I write it like up and say what for you it's uh, the main lessons that uh, you want uh, yeah. to give. As a social work, worker, I would say that for me, the, the important lesson is the, the mutual aid, uh, the mutual help to one to another, and the mutual uh, responsibility for one another. That was very strong in the corona times, and I hope, 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 that it will remain afterwards. And uh, I think that a little bit from this uh, uh, mutual responsibility, uh, we can see here in the gathering of all the Jewish community, you know, in Europe also, and I hope that you have such strong uh, connections between, between you that this uh, mutual uh, help and responsibility will help you also in, uh, in Europe. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We needed Corona to uh, meet like this. <laughs> uh, and I think we can uh, think about other uh, subjects that we can uh, learn together. Uh, I, think, um, I think it's an ongoing process that you have to work, work it out, you know. It's, not, it's, a, it's a muscle that you have to uh, work out. It's not, it doesn't happen by itself. And you have to think what is the most important subject that is, is important to your community and start building teams and, and work on it. All right, Tehila. זה מרגש שהמפגש הזה, עוד לפני שאני אגיד עליי, עצם זה שמפגש כזה מתקיים. חבל לי שהוא רק אנחנו מספרים ואנחנו גם לא שומעים, אני בטוחה שיש לנו גם לא מעט ללמוד. אולי בהזדמנות אחרת, ותודה רבה על האפשרות לשתף אתכם במעט מתוך המסע הארוך שלנו. It's very excited for me and emotional to see this gathering, and I hope we could hear from you and not just us talking about ourselves, and we hope maybe we'll do it again. We are in a learning mode, so it's fine that we ask so many questions and we got so many... Uh, <laughs> responses. So first of all, we really thank you, uh, Teila, Maya, and Hannah, for your inspiring, inspiring words and also to share with us your experience. If you want to share with us additional material or documents or, I don't know, checklist or explanation, if it's in Hebrew or in English preferably, so please uh, send it to us and we will circulate it amongst our Jewish leaders who participated from so many countries today. So thank you. Uh, to be continued, we will see. Everything to everyone. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thank and you. have a happy Shavuot. Be health. Yes, happy, happy Shavuot. Chag Sameach to all of you. Chag Sameach. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Chag Sameach. Shavuot. Chag Sameach. To everybody. And thank you very much to accept my, my colleague Paloma and Paolo from Italy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All of you. Very, you. very, very interesting. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye.